Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, I'd like to ask you a question. The question is, are you a difference maker? Do you make a difference? The answer is emphatically yes. You are a difference maker. You do make a difference in the lives of the people around you. And the way that you affect them influences the way that they relate to other people. You are a difference maker. The only question is, what sort of difference are you making? How do you affect other people? In what direction do you influence them? God calls us to make a Christ-like difference, to touch people with the love and the truth of Jesus Christ. Isn't that the sort of difference you want to make? In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the Apostle Paul describes two keys to making a Christ-like difference, two qualities that he found to be absolutely essential in touching other people with the love and the truth of Jesus Christ. The first key is found in these words from that chapter, though I am free and belong to no one, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, I might save some. So as we hear those words, we learn that the first key to Christ-like difference making is compassion. Compassion means entering into the condition and the situation of the other person, establishing an authentic connection with that person, being there with the other person, really being present to them and with them in their situation. This takes effort. It takes time. It takes patience. It's not always about solving somebody's problem, but it's about letting the other person know that he or she is not alone. You know, some problems are not going to be solved in this world. But knowing you are not alone, while it may not be a problem solver, is a great burden lifter. To know that you are not alone, that someone is walking with you, seeking to understand you and your situation. I believe that we should be hesitant to say, I understand, to someone else who is describing their situation or their feelings to us. We should not be too quick to say, oh, I understand, I understand. To say, I understand, before you really make the effort to feel what the other person is feeling could minimize and could even trivialize what that person is going through. When you think about it, they may not understand. They may not understand what's happening. They may not really understand how they're feeling. So how can you or I say, oh, I understand, when the other person is confused and perplexed? Perhaps better than saying, I understand, is to say, well, what do you think is happening? What do you think is going on? Or could you tell me more? 
I really want to know. I would like to understand. Compassion is entering into someone's condition and situation, walking with them. That's what the apostle was saying. To the weak, I became weak. To win the weak. It's feeling what someone is feeling. Compassion is seeking to understand, and this does, as we said, take effort, time, and patience. But without that authentic connection between yourself and that other person, it's difficult, if not impossible, to make a Christ-like difference, to share the love and truth of Jesus Christ in a way that will connect with that person. Compassion is one key to making a Christ-like difference. <laughs> the second key to Christ-like difference making is expressed in these words from 1 Corinthians 9. I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body. That means I discipline my body. And I make it my slave. So that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So as we hear these words, we learn that the second key to making a Christ-like difference is self-discipline. You know, so many people seem to think that their problems would be solved if they could control other people, when what they really need to work on is controlling themselves. When you're wondering what's going on in a relationship when there's a problem in a relationship, and you're trying to figure out what could possibly be changed to make the relationship better, Many times our first thought is about the other person. You know what they could do differently? How they could be a better person? Make my life easier? When you're wondering what could possibly change to make a relationship better, here's some advice that I heard once. Draw a circle on the floor that is three feet in diameter. Okay, three foot circle on the floor. Now, step two, step into the circle. What's inside the circle is what needs to change. <laughs> and it's not the floor. <laughs> it's you. It's you. You know, that's because you really can't make another person change. You certainly affect other people. You may very well influence other people, but you cannot fundamentally change another person. Making the necessary changes in your own life will keep you plenty busy. As we think about self-discipline, it's also important to remember that self-discipline means taking good care of yourself so that you can serve God to the best of your ability. That's what the apostle was saying. I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after preaching to others, I won't be disqualified. Self-discipline, taking good care of yourself so that you can serve God to the best of your ability. It's not selfish to take care of yourself when you're seeking to share the love and truth of Jesus Christ with others. I found that there are two emotional warning signs that indicate that you're not taking good care of yourself. These are sort of like blinking lights on the dashboard of your life. Those emotional warning signs 
We're not talking about physical warning signs here, but emotional warning signs. Or when you find yourself becoming discouraged and irritable. When you get discouraged, you start to feel like all your hard work is useless and meaningless. You think nobody appreciates you. And then you start to feel sorry for yourself. I don't know about you, but I know this. When I'm feeling sorry for myself, I'm not pleasant company. You don't really make a Christ-like difference when you're feeling sorry for yourself, which happens when we become discouraged. When you're irritable, other people can't do anything right. You're touchy. The least little things get on your nerves. You develop more and more pet peeves, a whole menagerie of pet peeves. And you start feeding your pet peeves and stroking them like crazy and paying more and more attention to them. So what should you do when you start feeling discouraged and irritable? Well, maybe you need to get a little more sleep. Now that may not sound very spiritual, but it is. Because sometimes we can get into a sort of self-idolatry thing, you know, and think we can do it all and all the time. Dear friend, the truth is you are not God. God is the only one who doesn't need sleep. He never sleeps. But even though he doesn't, he actually took a break on the seventh day to remind us that we need a rest. Don't try to pretend you are God. Take a break. Get some rest. Regularly. Maybe you need to take a look at the food and the drink that you are putting into your body. The Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So let's not clutter up the temple with junk. We wouldn't think of bringing a lot of junk in here and leaving it all around this beautiful place, would we? This temple? Don't clutter up the temple of your body with, with junk. Or how about taking a few more steps each day, if you can? Some people can't do it, but most of us can. Just simply walking does all sorts of good things for your body and your brain and your spirit, too. Maybe you're getting discouraged and irritable because you're giving your, your prime time and your best energy to everybody out there. Everybody out there. You're on your best behavior with everybody else while the people closest to you get the leftovers. Get the less wonderful side of you. So do you schedule prime time to be with the people that you care about? Do you save some of your best energy and attention for the people who care the most about you? At some point in my life, someone asked me the question that really penetrated into my heart and soul. He said, if you were to die today, who would really miss you a year from now? That person went on to say, why not put more of your prime time and best energy into that person, into those people who care the most? You know, and I think you'll find that even just a little more, just a little more, 
will make a big difference. God can do a lot with a little. Jesus fed thousands and thousands of people just a little bit of bread and fish. And God can do a lot with a little that we give to him and invest in making a Christ-like difference. Jesus Christ is the perfect role model of compassion and self-discipline. In his compassion, he entered into our condition in every respect except sin, so that he could save us from the eternal damnation that we deserve for our sins. He was tempted in every respect the Bible says, just as we are, so he understands how we feel. He has compassion. In his self-discipline, he took very good care of himself, staying strong so that he could carry out his mission of salvation flawlessly in perfect obedience to the Father's will. And in self-discipline, he submitted himself to that will of his heavenly Father, saying in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before he went to the cross, not my will, Father, but your will be done. Even when that will took him to the cross in your place and mine. So those are two keys to Christ-like difference-making, compassion and self-discipline. And we need both. Compassion is directed toward the well-being of the other person, seeking to understand, walking with them in their situation. And self-discipline is about taking care of yourself and sort of managing yourself so that you can serve God to the best of your ability. Jesus did both to perfection for you to make an eternal difference in your life and mine. Because of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Praise God. Because of Jesus, we have peace with God. Because of Jesus, we live each day in the joy of salvation and the hope of heaven. And because of Jesus, we have strength for the day and life for eternity. And it's all because of Jesus Christ, the ultimate difference maker. May the peace of God that passes all understanding stand guard of our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.